Agreed? Agreed and so ordered. Orders of the day. Order du jour. Orders of the day, government orders, government bills, commons, consideration at second reading of Bill C-45, the Cannabis Act. Ms. Uh, Wilson-Raybould, uh, seconded by Ms. Shagger, moves that Bill C-45, an act respecting cannabis, and to amend the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the Criminal Code, and other acts, be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Health. Debate. The Honourable Minister of Justice. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my privilege to uh, speak today about Bill C-45, an act respecting cannabis, and to amend the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the Criminal Code, and other acts. Bill C-45 proposes a framework to restrict and strictly regulate access to cannabis in order to protect the health and safety of Canadians, to keep cannabis out of the hands of young people, and to keep the profits out of the hands of criminals. I introduced Bill C-45 on April the 13th alongside another important piece of legislation, Bill C-46, which proposes new and stronger laws to more seriously tackle um, drug and alcohol impaired driving. In the 2015 speech from the throne, our government committed to legalizing, strictly regulating, and restricting access to cannabis. This commitment is motivated by a recognition that Canada's existing approach to cannabis, one of criminal prohibition, is not working. It has allowed criminals and organized <laughs> crime to profit while failing to keep cannabis out of the hands of young Canadians. In many cases, it is easier for kids to buy cannabis than cigarettes or a bottle of beer. Statistics tell us that the current system of criminal prohibition is failing. Youth in Canada use cannabis at some of the highest rates in the world. A 2013 UNICEF report found that teenagers in Canada use cannabis more than teenagers in any other developed country. The 2015 Canadian Tobacco, Alcohol and Drug, Sur Drug Survey found that 21% of Canadian youth aged 15 to 19 and 30% of young adults from age 20 to 24 reported using cannabis. Mr. Speaker, the current approach to cannabis has created an environment where organized crime reaps billions of dollars in profits from the sale of illicit, illicit cannabis and thousands of Canadians end up with criminal records for non-violent minor cannabis offences each year. A majority of Canadians no longer believe that simple possession of small amounts of cannabis should be subject to harsh criminal sanctions which can have lifelong impacts for individuals and which take up precious resources in our criminal justice system. Our government agrees that there is a better approach. Bill C-46, or 45, paves the way for Canada to become the first G20 country to enact legislation to legalize and strictly regulate cannabis at the national level. The overall goal would be to protect the health and safety of Canadians with a particular focus on protecting our young people. Our government understands the complexity of this initiative. That is why we have taken a cautious, evidence-based approach. To ensure that our legislation would be informed by evidence, my colleagues, the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness and the Minister of Health and I announced the creation of a task force on cannabis legalization and regulation on June 30th, 2016. Its, my man, or it's, my, its mandate was to advise our government on the design of a new regulatory system. The task force conducted extensive consultations across the country, visited the United States of Washington and Colorado, both of which have legal access to cannabis for non-medical purposes, and considered nearly 30,000 online submissions sent in by Canadians. It also sought the views of a diverse community of experts, professionals, advocates, frontline workers, youth, Indigenous communities and organizations, government officials, law enforcement, citizens and employers as set out in its mandate. All Canadians owe a debt of gratitude to the Chair of the Task Force, the Honourable Anne McClellan, and the eight other distinguished members, all experts in their own right, 
and all of whom volunteered significant amounts of their time throughout the second half of or 2016. The task force delivered its final report on December the 13th of 2016 entitled A Framework for the Legalization and Regulation of Cannabis in Canada. The chair described this final report as the result of a truly national collaboration featuring a diversity of opinions and expertise expressed by those who gave their time and reflections. I would invite members who may wish to inform themselves of the complex and cross-cutting issues and challenges uh, associated with cannabis legalization to have a look at, the at this substantive piece of work. The report has been very well received, is comprehensive, and provides important background information on the issues this bill seeks to address. The task force is comprised of over 80 recommendations for the development of a cannabis framework in Canada. It reflects a public health approach aimed at reducing harm and promoting the health and safety of Canadians. The recommendations fall under five themes. First, in taking a public health approach to the regulation of cannabis, the task force proposed measures that will remain or that will maintain and improve the health of Canadians by minimizing the potential harms associated with cannabis use. Second, the task force called for the creation of a safe and responsible supply chain and recommended the design of an appropriate distribution system. The task force noted that government's principal interest should be the establish to establish an efficient, accountable, and transparent system for regulatory oversight of the supply chain, emphasizing the protection of health and safety and reducing diversion to the illicit market. It recommended that wholesale distribution of cannabis be regulated by the provinces and territories. Third, the task force highlighted the need for a for clear, enforceable rules to ensure that all Canadians and law enforcement agencies understand what is permitted and what continues to be prohibited under the new legal regime. The task force also heard that penalties for contravening the new rules will need to be proportional to the contravention and that the criminal justice system should only be employed where truly necessary. Fourth, the task force recommendations for a regulatory framework for non-medical cannabis were informed by the existing rules governing the medical system. These rules establish safeguards to ensure product quality and, secured, and security, as well as safety provisions to prevent diversion. Fifth, the task force report underscores that the regulation of cannabis is a complex public policy issue. As with other such issues, the depth and scale of the complexity increases as we turn to the practicalities of implementation. Our government recognizes that it will be necessary for all levels of government to coordinate efforts in order to implement a, an effective regime. We remain committed to working with our provincial and territorial counterparts as well as with municipalities to develop a framework that strictly regulates access to cannabis in a way that works for everyone involved. Mr. Speaker, building on the recommendations of the Task Force on Cannabis Legalization and Regulation, our government has proposed legislation that pursues a new approach to the regulation of cannabis. The approach sets national standards and will be more effective at protecting public health and safety, keeping cannabis out of the hands of youth, and reducing the role of the legal market and organized crime. Our government's commitment to legalize and strictly regulate cannabis marks a major change for Canada. But I am convinced that what is proposed in Bill C-45 is the best approach for Canadians. Mr. Speaker, I would like to speak um, to a few components of Bill C-45. I would like to begin by highlighting the overall or overarching purpose of the bill. Simply put, its purpose is to protect the health and safety of Canadians. Specifically, it aims to protect the health of young people by restricting their access to cannabis, to protect young people and others from advertising and other promotional activities that are likely to encourage them to use cannabis, to provide for the lawful protection of cannabis 
to reduce illegal activities in relation to cannabis, and to deter illegal activities in relation to cannabis through appropriate sanctions and enforcement measures, to reduce the burden on the criminal justice system in relation to cannabis, to provide Canadians with access to quality controlled, a quality controlled supply of cannabis, and to enhance public awareness of the health risks associated with cannabis use. Mr. Speaker, I want to emphasize that while our government is legalizing cannabis, we are also strictly regulating and restricting access to it. Bill C-45 will create a new legal framework that will allow adults to access legal cannabis through an appropriate retail framework sourced from a well-regulated industry or grown in limited amounts at home. Adults 18 years or older would be permitted to legally possess up to 30 grams of, of legal dried cannabis in public or its equivalent in other forms. Adults could also legally share up to 30 grams of dried cannabis or its equivalent with other adults. Selling or possessing cannabis in order to sell it would only be lawful if authorized under the Act. Under no circumstances could cannabis be sold or given to a young person. Production of cannabis would also have to be authorized under the Act. Possession, production, distribution, importation, exportation, and sale outside of the legal framework would be illegal and subject to criminal penalties. These penalties would be proportionate to the seriousness of the offence, ranging from ticketing up to a maximum penalty of 14 years imprisonment. This reflects a measured approach to meet our legislative objectives. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-45 would exempt young persons from criminal prosecution who possess up to five grams of cannabis. Our government has proposed this approach because we do not want to expose young people to the criminal justice system for possessing what amounts to be very small amounts of cannabis. For possession or distribution of more than five grams, young people would be subject to the provisions of the Youth Criminal Justice Act, which emphasizes community-based responses that promote rehabilitation and reintegration. For less serious offenses, alternatives to charging are encouraged, such as taking no further action, warning the young person, or referring the young person to a community program or agency to help address the circumstances underlying their offending behavior. Moreover, our government will be engaging with the provinces and territories to encourage them to create provincial offenses that would apply to youth possession under five grams of cannabis. This would provide police with the authority to seize cannabis from a young person while not subjecting them to the consequences of criminal liability for these small amounts. This would be similar to the approach that has been taken in the context of alcohol. Such a measured approach for youth is consistent with the task force report, which stated that simple possession for youth should not be a criminal offense, but that sanctions should focus on adults who provide cannabis to youth. It is also consistent with the substantive body of evidence concerning the heightened risks of cannabis use for young persons, including the effects on brain development. This approach will also address our objectives of keeping cannabis out of the hands of youth while ensuring that they do not enter the criminal justice system for minor possession offences. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-45 will allow cannabis producers to promote their brands and provide information about their product but only where young persons would not be exposed to it. These li limits are reasonable. They would allow adult consumers to make informed decisions while responding to the greater risks that cannabis poses for young people. Under the proposed legislation, the federal, provincial, and territorial governments would all share in responsibility for overseeing the new system. The federal government would oversee the production and manufacturing component of the cannabis framework and set industry-wide rules and standards. The provinces and territories would generally be responsible for the distribution and sale components of the framework. They would also be able to create, or to create further restrictions as they see fit, including increasing the minimum age in their jurisdiction uh, to, for example, align with their drinking age, 
as well as lowering possession limits for cannabis, which could be pursued to further protect youth. Further, the provinces and territories, along with the municipalities, could create additional rules for growing cannabis at home, including the possibility of lowering the number of plants allowed per resident and restricting the places in which cannabis can be consumed. In addition to working with the provinces and territories to establish a secure supply chain, jurisdictions will be key partners in our government's efforts to raise public awareness about the potential risks associated with cannabis use. Mr. Speaker, our government believes in evidence-based policy. We will monitor patterns of and perceptions around cannabis use amongst Canadians, especially youth through an annual Canadian cannabis survey. The data gathered will inform and refine further public education and awareness activities and to mitigate the risks of and harms of use. In this regard, as spelled out in Budget 2017, existing funding of $9.6 million will be directed to public education and awareness and monitoring and surveillance activities. I can tell you, I can also tell you, Mr. Speaker, that our government intends to offset the broader costs associated with implementing this new system by collecting licensing and other fees, as well as through revenues generated through taxation. This is currently what we do in tobacco and alcohol industry. Subject to approval by Parliament, our government intends to bring the proposed legislation into force no later than July of 2018. At that time, adults across Canada would be able uh, to legally possess up to 30 grams of dried cannabis or its equivalent when in public. They could share up to 30 grams of dried cannabis or its equivalent with other adults. They would be able to purchase dried or fresh cannabis or cannabis oil from a provincially regulated retailer or online from a federally licensed producer in jurisdictions um, that have not put a regulated retail framework in place. Adults could choose to grow up to four cannabis plants per resident, subject to a height restriction of one meter. They could also make legal cannabis-containing products, provided that the dangerous solvents, aren't, that dangerous solvents are not used. Mr. Speaker, upon coming into force of the legislation, adults would be able to legally purchase fresh and dried cannabis, cannabis oils and seeds, or plants for cultivation. Other products, such as edibles, would become available at a later date once federal regulations for their production and sale have been developed. I would note as well that the current program for access to cannabis for medical purposes would continue under the new Act. This is in keeping with the task force recommendation to initially maintain a separate medical access framework in order to support patients. Our government has been clear that to meet its objectives of keeping cannabis out of the hands of kids and the profits out of the hands of criminals, there needs to be a legal means by which adult Canadians can purchase cannabis. Our government's objective is to provide room for the provinces and territories to establish a um, distribution and retail system that align with their unique circumstances. Recognizing that some provinces and territories may not have, have systems set up and running upon royal assent, our government is proposing to facilitate access for Canadians to a regulated, quality-controlled supply of cannabis through a secure mail system via existing licensed producers. I would like to conclude, Mr. Speaker, uh, by encouraging all members to support Bill C-45 I know that the status quo is not working. All members of this House understand that we must do better, especially for our youth. The proposed legislation represents a balanced approach designed to protect the health and safety of Canadians. It will provide adults with a regulated access to legal cannabis while restricting access to youth. It will put in place strict safeguards to protect youth from being encouraged to use cannabis and create new offenses for those adults who either provide cannabis to youth or use youth to commit cannabis-related offenses. By reducing the demand to the illicit market, the proposed regime would also cut the profits of criminal organizations who are benefiting greatly from the current regime. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-45 would also help reduce the burden on police and the criminal justice system with respect to non-violent minor offenses. 
In addition, the bill proposes to strengthen the laws and enforcement measures to deter and punish more serious cannabis offences, particularly selling and distributing to youth and selling outside of the regulatory framework. Mr. Speaker, following the debate at second reading, I urge all members of this House to pass to support Bill C-45 at second reading and refer it to committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. Question and comment. The Honourable Member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, I have two quick questions uh, for, for the Minister of Justice. Uh, she indicated that uh, this, this uh, whole bill is based on evidence-based policies, and she said that's the uh, policy of her government, but yet she must be aware of the fact that the Canadian Medical Association has, has already come out with uh, uh, their stand on this, that um, the use of cannabis would have significant psychological impacts on brain development until the age of 25. In addition, the Canadian Pediatric Society considers the dangers of a young person purchasing marijuana or using marijuana until uh, the age of 25 uh, that uh, they're jeopardizing their brain health. Well, if, if it's uh, evidence-based policies, wouldn't she agree that this is completely inconsistent with that? And she mentioned at least on six occasions during her speech that uh, the Liberals were very interested in protecting youth. I would ask her, is there any easier way for young people to get marijuana than if their parents have got four plants in the kitchen? Is there any easier way for them to have access than that? I'd be interested. The Honourable Minister of Justice. Well, um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank uh, um, my honourable colleague across the way for the two questions. I'm very pleased to have introduced Bill C-45. It is an evidence-based piece of legislation that seeks to put in a complex regime to legalize and strictly regulate cannabis in this country. It is based on a substantive uh, task force report, that a task force that traveled across the country, received over 30,000 submissions with respect to how we can put in place a complex regime for, for legalization. And in terms of um, evidence around the age and, and the, the legal age in terms of being able to access a legal supply of cannabis. This um, was something that the task force weighed in on. Uh, in terms of balancing the necessity of protecting the health and safety of young people and the recognition of the impacts that there may um, be on brain development, we had to um, balance that reality with another reality that the um, the greatest numbers of individuals who are currently um, smoking or using cannabis is among young people. So we had to balance the two realities in terms of putting forward um, our position with respect to um, the legalization and regulation. And in, in terms of protecting youth, in terms of, of home um, grow, uh, having four plants one meter high, um, uh, this is um, providing the ability for individuals to grow in their homes, um, recognizing that adults would, as they do with prescription drugs or alcohol, provide security and safety measures in order for young people that may or may not live in their home or access their home be protected against uh, um, uh, having access to those um, uh, Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Cowichan, Malahat Langford. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the Minister's speech on C-45. I was pleased to hear in her speech that she noted that criminal prohibition is not working and is indeed failing. She also noted that the majority of Canadians support the end of criminal pro prohibition punishment. And indeed, even if we go back to the Liberal platform of 2015, it noted that arresting and prosecuting for cannabis offences is expensive for our criminal justice system. It traps too many Canadians in the criminal justice system for minor non-violent offences. Now, the Liberals have repeatedly said that they want to legalize, strictly regulate and restrict access in order to keep it out of the hands of kids and the proceeds out of crime. I accept that. I don't think she will find any argument in this House against that. My question is, is in her preamble, she seems to have made a very strong case for decriminalization. She has acknowledged the harms that criminal prohibition and punishment does to our society, particularly youth and racialized Canadians. This government has now been in power for almost 20 months. Many regimes around the world have instituted decriminalization quite well. I still have not heard a good argument from the Liberal government why they will not institute this as a good interim measure on the road to legalization. The Honourable Minister of Justice. 
Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank my honourable colleague for, for the question, and, and thank him for reiterating the purpose of why we're introducing this legislation. We're committed to um, legalizing, strictly regulating, and restricting access uh, to cannabis, and the reasons, as he clearly articulated, is to keep it out of the hands of children and the proceeds out of the hands of criminals. By simply decriminalizing right now, um, we will not be able to achieve those objectives. That is why we are working very diligently, benefiting from the substantive input that we receive from the task force and Canadians right across the country to ensure that we put in place, working with the provinces and territories and municipalities, this complex regime for the legalization and the strict regulation of cannabis. And that's what we're focused on. We're very hopeful that this legislation will move through the parliamentary process and that we will have a legal regime in this country in order to achieve uh, the objectives that I stated in my remarks in terms of keeping it out of the hands of kids, proceeds out of the hands of criminals, and ensuring that for minor possession offences that we are not criminalizing young people or adults. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Sarnia Lampton. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the Honourable Justice Minister for her speech, which he says is very nice, but it doesn't accurately reflect what is in the bill, specifically with respect to protecting and keeping cannabis out of the hands of children and youth. In addition to the four plants in the household, which if she would refer to poisoning data, you'll see that kids eat plants all the time because um, their parents don't put them up in the cupboards. Um, we've also got the provision in this bill to allow 12 to 17-year-olds to have up to five Five grams, which I understand is about 10 joints. Does she not agree that that will put cannabis in the hands of the youth, and in fact, they will there probably are. become the drug mules at the school? The Honourable Minister of Justice. Well, I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank my uh, my honourable colleague across the way for for the questions. I want to be clear: there is nothing in Bill C-45 that provides the legal ability for young people under the age of 18 to legally access cannabis. Uh, in terms of the four plants that she referenced, as I noted in the previous question, um, certainly this is um, uh, necessary and the responsibility of adults in the home to take precautionary measures to prevent uh, young people from gaining access to the plants such as they do for alcohol or prescription drugs. Um, in terms of the um, five gram limit that the, the honorable member mentions, this is to put in place or not to criminalize young people for possibly having in their possession less than five grams of cannabis. We are working very closely with the provinces and territories, encouraging the provinces and territories to put in place offensives, offenses in terms of um, less than five grams possession for young people. Um, along the same lines of what happens with respect to alcohol, um, we are going to continue to have these conversations with the provinces and territories to ensure that we are covering all of our bases and um, uh, ensuring that this complex regime is put in place and recognizes the differences between and among uh, the different provinces and territories, potentially um, using the permissive nature of the legislation to adapt to their respective jurisdictions, whether that be around age, whether that be around um, home growth. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Salaberry, Sirwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her speech on C45. What I deplore and have deplored since the announcement was made about this bill is that the Liberals are not announcing any additional money for prevention. We're told that the bill is there to protect young people and their health. They want to reduce their access to marijuana. But what I'm hearing in the field from uh, stakeholders, be it uh, youth centres, um, group homes, people working with youth crime, or mental health, the consumption of drugs is something for which there's not enough money. The government announced less than $2 million a year, but that's not just for marijuana, that's for all drugs, for everything to do with health care in general. If you compare this to Colorado, in 2015 alone, $45 million was allocated regarding the legalization of marijuana. Here there's a lack of vision. They are setting aside the effect this could have on mental health, on social behavior, the rest of the um, the lives of young people. There could be impacts on brain development. 
We're still analyzing the uh, effect of the levels of THC from a scientific standpoint. We need to have the means to catch up with our ambitions here. I'm waiting to hear the government invest more. There's nothing in the last budget about prevention. This is critical. Order, please. Unfortunately, time is limited. The Honourable Minister of Justice. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and I really appreciate the, the question from, from uh, the honourable co my honourable colleague across the way in terms of prevention. I couldn't agree more that our government needs to continue the work that we're doing to ensure building on the work of the task force that raised awareness around the legalization and regulation of cannabis. We need to ensure that we're taking, and we are ensuring that we're taking a public health and safety approach and to make sure um, we... Um, use the $9.6 billion or million dollars that was mentioned in Budget 2017, but also recognize that we're going to um, have to continue, and we're committed to continuing, to have a broad-based public education campaign that speaks to the detrimental impacts of cannabis on brain development, that speaks to the impacts and relationship um, with respect to mental illness. I know my colleague, the Minister of Health, is committed to continuing to have this discussion. I know that she's going to be presenting before this Honourable House in a couple of days, and I would would invite uh, my colleague to ask her about the specific measures, but this is a firm commitment of our government to ensure in putting in place a complex regime for the legalization of cannabis and the strict regulation that we do the necessary work to ensure that we're communicating effectively and that we um, provide um, the education measures that are required for Canadians to understand the regime that we're putting in place. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Niagara Falls. Thank you very much. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise in the House today to share some thoughts regarding Bill C-45, an act respecting uh, cannabis, and to amend the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the Criminal Code, and other acts. Essentially, this bill proposes to regulate and legalize the production, possession, use, and distribution of marijuana across Canada. Now, Mr. Speaker, the government is on record saying they want to implement this by July of next year. The government's decision to move hastily on such an important piece of legislation concerns me. Let me be clear. This marijuana bill will have far-reaching impacts on every part of our society. It's imperative that before proceeding with the significant changes to the criminal code, a thorough debate takes place in this House for all members who wish to speak. I'd like to take a minute to outline some of the areas of concerns that I have with this legislation. One of the major issues I have with this legislation is the fact that it will be putting children at risk of having much greater access to marijuana. And I'm sure this concern resonates with parents of young children and teenagers. Now, while the government has consistently touted that one of their objections is to prevent young people from assessing cannabis, in reality, this bill does just the opposite. Clauses 8 and 9 of the legislature are a perfect example. These provisions state that it's prohibited for an individual to possess or distribute more than four cannabis plants that are not budding or flowering. This means that it will be legal for people to grow at least four marijuana plants inside their homes. I don't know of any easier way. I said that in my question. I can't imagine an easier way for children to access, assess, access marijuana than that way. Because unlike Unlike prescription pills, which you can put away, the marijuana plants, by definition, have to be out in the open. And so I, I can't imagine any easier way for children to, to get a hold of, of marijuana when their parents are starting to grow it in the kitchen. Now, my uh, concerns for children and teenagers don't end there, Mr. Speaker. Consider the dangers for young people who may come in contact with marijuana edibles. Now, this is an issue that is not properly addressed in C-45. I've seen photographs, as I'm sure you have, of these edibles. They are indistinguishable from candy treats or baked goods that are often found on the kitchen counter, in the kitchen cupboard, or even in a cookie jar, enticing prizes for young children. They are so convincing that an adult could mistake a pot edible for being the real candy, the real thing. The possible health risks for children ingesting these kinds of edibles cannot be underestimated. And according to healthcare professionals, such as Dr. Robert Glatter, 
the consumption of multiple servings of edibles at one time for any age group results in various potential psychological effects, not to mention the possibility of over-sedation, anxiety, or psychosis. Ingesting multiple servings on a short time span can also produce intense anxiety, paranoia, and even psychosis. These adverse side effects are more frequent among first-time users. Now, if these are, are the health risks that affect adults inge ingesting edibles, one can only imagine the danger they pose to children, who are almost certainly going to be first-time users. In fact, experts from the Department of Justice have attested that edibles pose significant risks to the health of children. Clearly, the entirely plausible chance that children may accidentally ingest these edibles clearly deserves a more careful examination by the members of this House. Another illogical aspect of this legislation that the government must address is the ambiguous rules regarding the quantity of marijuana that children may legally possess. As we've heard, Mr. Speaker, according to C45, Clause 8, Subsection C, children under the age of 18 are prohibited from possessing the equivalent of five grams of marijuana or more. Now, what happens then, Mr. Speaker, when a 12-year-old uh, uh, uses or distributes cannabis to his peers on the playground every day with no questions asked? This is a lax approach. How can the government ensure that children and teenagers will not be required, re recruited by organized crime? I can see that is what is going to, to be happen. On a simpler front, is it safer to be in possession of four grams of cannabis or five? Or is the safest quantity possession and distribution of zero grams? That's what our party would support, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals will tell Canadians that four grams is okay, but the Conservatives, on the other hand, are firm in our conviction that zero grams is the only safe amount for our children. The Cannabis Act is replete with arbitrary cutoffs that do nothing to protect our children from the dangers of marijuana, and in fact, we believe they expose them to greater risk. Can Canadians deserve clarity when it comes to legislation that will significantly affect so many aspects of our justice, health, and public sy safety systems, and more importantly, their daily lives and families. And it's not enough, I'd like to point out, it's not enough to say we're going to shove all these things over to the province and let them figure out. There's a responsibility, Mr. Speaker, of the federal government in this here to get it right. If all these problems with accessibility alone were not sufficient to highlight the shortcomings of Bill C-45, Mr. Speaker. Please note that the Prime Minister and his government proposed that the legal age to purchase marijuana be 18 years of age. Now, for a government that claims to espouse product evidence-based policy, this provision is clearly off the mark. And all you have to do is just ask any doctor, health organization, or health expert. For one, the scientific evidence overwhelmingly concerns that the human brain does not fully develop until individuals reach their mid-twenties. The Canadian Medical Association, as I've pointed out, has already warned the government that the use of cannabis may have significant psychological impacts on brain development up to the age of 25, and they recommend that 21 be the youngest acceptable age to legalize the purchase of marijuana. And indeed, the position of the Canadian pa Pediatric Society likewise urges the government to consider the dangers of so young an age to purchase marijuana. Again, they keep talking about protecting children, but they completely ignore the evidence. Indeed, the co-author of that position paper, Dr. Christine Grant, has stated at the very least the levels of THC must be limited until after the age of 25 to be considered safe for brain health. Once again, <coughs> C45 lacks crucial information. Why are the Liberals ignoring this crucial scientific information, information that has a tangible impact on the health and best interests of Canadians? And it's not enough to say we are ignoring all the evidence and let the provinces figure this out, Mr. Speaker. That is not good enough. Further, while drafting this legislation, the Liberals government had plenty of time to study the impact of marijuana legalization in several jurisdictions in the United States. And instead of learning from those mistakes and challenges that have befallen these states, the government has decided to ram this legislation through 
and again, this will be a complete detriment to Canadians. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples of what we're talking about. First is the fact that our American counterparts have found an increase in impaired driving following the legalization of marijuana in certain jurisdictions. In fact, at the U.S. Department of Justice have found that, quote, on Colorado roads during the year following legalization of marijuana, there has been a 32 percent increase in deaths related to marijuana impaired driving. That is completely unacceptable. There is little doubt that Canadians will see a similar increase of drug impaired driving if marijuana is legalized. In fact, statistics have already shown that this is a serious problem. According to the Canadian Student Tobacco, Alcohol and Drug Survey, nearly one in five Canadian high school students have been a passenger in a car whose driver had recently smoked uh, marijuana. Canadians of all ages are very confused about the many existing myths regarding smoking and driving. For example, in a 2014 poll, 32% of Canadian teens believed that driving high is less dangerous than driving drunk. The perpetuation of this kind of thinking will have serious consequences, Mr. Speaker. A report prepared by the Canadian Centre on Substance Abuse states that Canadians 16 to 19 years of age are more likely to drive two hours after ingesting marijuana than they would be two hours after drinking. The World Health Organization, on the other hand, has been clear in debunking this myth. They have stated Quote, evidence suggests recent smoking is associated with substantial driving impairment, particularly in occasional smokers, with implications for work and safety sensitive positions or operating a means of transportation, including airplanes. Complex human machine performance can be impaired as long as 24 hours after smoking a moderate dose of cannabis, and the user may be unaware of the drug's influence. Now, in light of this information, C45 does not provide sufficient avenues to educate young people about the undeniable danger of driving high. Now, should the government insist on ramming this legislation through, they should seriously take into account the importance of public awareness campaigns in protecting young people. Ultimately, actions speak louder than words, and legalizing marijuana sends the wrong message to young Canadians that pot is a benign judge that is not any cause for concern. In reality, this government cannot guarantee that more children and teenagers will not be injured in motor vehicle accidents, if not worse, as a result of increased access to marijuana. This, beyond doubt, is something the government should have considered seriously before ramming, trying to ram this bill through Parliament into, in an attempt to live up to uh, a campaign promise. Another important and threatening problem is facing jurisdictions that have legalized marijuana is the increase in cannabis-related hospitalizations. We've already established, Mr. Speaker, that the research that proves marijuana can be dangerous of have dangerous effects on children's brain development and overall health. In Colorado, now these studies have had far-reaching and tangible consequences. According to a recent report by the Colorado Department of Health, hospitalization involving patients with marijuana exposure and diagnosis tripled from around 803 per 100,000 in 2001 to 2,413 per 100,000. Now, Mr. Speaker, that's, that's uh, about three times as many people were hospitalized. This serves as a cautionary guideline for how children will be impacted by easy access and exposure to pot. A report by the Rocky Mountain HIDTA states that, quote, the number of Colorado children who have been reported to a poison control center or examined at a hospital for unintentional marijuana exposure annually has spiked since the state legalized recreational cannabis. These statistics are not inconsequential. Once again, Mr. Speaker, why has this government ignored the lessons that our peers have faced after legalizing marijuana? Answers to these challenges are certainly not found in Bill C-45. The gaping holes in this legislation are indisputable. If homegrown marijuana plants are permitted, coupled with alarming and unanswered questions related to marijuana edibles, children will clearly have easier access to the substance. 
And given the bill's ambiguity and how much cannabis constitutes an offense, children and teenagers may possess and distribute up to four grams of marijuana with no clear recourse to protect them. Setting the age of majority for marijuana use at 18 promotes a lax approach to brain development and public safety. Finally, the government's unwillingness to acknowledge the fact that comparable jurisdictions have faced crucial health and safety challenges as a result of similar legalization processes is not only reckless, but unfair to Canadians who put their trust in their members of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, while the risks to children constitute my greatest concern with Bill C-45, there are numerous other problems that are go un Addressed, unaddressed in this legislation. One of these is the fact that the bill provides little or no clear clarity on the degree of flexibility that the governments will allow provincial governments and municipal law enforcement to Im implement this. Additionally, it does not sufficiently address the, the costs for retraining officers giving, get re, given the changes to the criminal code. Moreover, the questions surrounding the Canada-US border crossing should legalization take place is particularly worrisome to me. As my constituents in Niagara Falls live right across from our American neighbours and often ha have the occasion to travel to the United States and taking note of the fact that most American border states have not legalized recreational marijuana, the discrepancy in policy could greatly impact, among other things, the waiting time to cross the border. Now, the former U.S. Ambassador to Canada, Bruce Heyman, has expressed his doubts regarding the efficiency at the border and the legalization of marijuana. His primary concern is the fact that border patrol dogs are not trained to distinguish marijuana scents from other prohibited items. He stated, and I quote, these dogs are trained to have reactions to certain scents. Some of these scents start with marijuana. Others are something that are significantly more challenging for the border. But the dog doesn't tell you that this is marijuana and that the or that this is an explosive. The dog reacts, and these border guards are going to have to appropriately do an investigation, and that could slow down the border down." End of quote. My constituents and all of the 400,000 Canadians who travel the United States every day deeply are concerned about the waiting times, and they want them to be as expeditious as possible. How can the government ensure that these delays won't affect Canadian business people, families, visiting loved ones, or even Canada-U.S. relations writ large, Mr. Speaker? Bill C-45 is silent on yet another important consideration for Canadians. Mr. Speaker, it's evident that the government has been too hasty in its attempt to push through this legislation without consideration of all the risks to children, confusion surrounding implementation, delays at border crossings, this complex issue could result in insurmountable health and safety burdens in the years to come. As such, I urge my fellow members to take the significant problems with this legislation into consideration. So to conclude, I would like to move, seconded by the member for Kitchener-Conestega, that the motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. This House declines to give second reading to Bill C-45, an act respecting cannabis, and to amend the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the Criminal Code, and other acts, since this bill makes homegrown marijuana more accessible to children. Thank you very much. Mr. Nicholson, seconded by Mr. Albrecht, moves that the motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. 
This House declines to give second reading to Bill C-45, an act respecting cannabis, and to amend the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the Criminal Code, and other acts, since the bill makes homegrown marijuana more accessible to children. Questions and comments? Question and the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to begin by um, acknowledging the comments of my honourable colleague, who I have uh, much respect for. But there are a number of flawed assumptions um, in those remarks, which I'd like to highlight now, uh, as it relates to his interpretation of Bill C-45. And the first is that somehow children will have lawful access to cannabis. And I want to assure the honourable colleague uh, that C-45 in no way prohibits any lawful access to cannabis to youth. The second is, is that children will somehow be allowed to traffic cannabis. And of course, Bill C-45 would not permit that, and it would certainly not per uh, permit adults from using youth to, to traffic cannabis. And in fact, there is a higher sentence, in, which we are proposing, a higher maximum 14-year sentence, which is an improvement from the current regime. And the most important flawed assumption that he makes is that somehow the status quo was working with respect to cannabis, when all of the evidence and all of the efforts which have been put in by the Independent Task Force demonstrates that it is not. And isn't that the trouble, Mr. Speaker, with the Conservatives' approach to law and order, is that it ignores evidence, that it somehow continues to introduce unconstitutional laws which have been struck down by the Supreme Court of Canada, like mandatory minimums, and that they show no faith in our courts, which, have the be which are situated best to provide justice and safety to, the Cana to all Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Niagara Falls. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I put this question uh, to the Minister of Justice, the Honourable Member, I probably remember at the Justice Committee here, I think just a couple of weeks ago, what happens uh, uh, to the, 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 chi the child who's got four grams uh, of marijuana? I mean, we, we had to, we, we made the point uh, that it, it specifically says that uh, you can't have more than five. Well, what about if you got two or three? And, right. and isn't this going to be very helpful to people who love to sell drugs around schools? Or you want to get the young people here and say, be careful, don't, don't take more than five grams here with you. Just, you know, do the four grams, sell that, and come, come back to, to see us. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, again, uh, if the Honourable Member says we don't respect the justice system or everything else, well, that's the point. Does he want to ignore the evidence with respect to impaired driving? Check it out in Colorado. Check it out with all these different jurisdictions. Once they legalize marijuana, impaired driving with, uh, that has, uh, as a result of smoking marijuana goes up. There's 32% there's increase in deaths in Colorado since they have done this. And so, yes, we Conservatives, yes, we're worried about the criminal code. We're worried about the justice system. We're worried about the victims, the victims of people who are uh, victims of crime. And that's, that's one of the things that distinguishes us. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Cowichan, Malahat Langford. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And um, I just wanted to follow up on the Parliamentary Secretary's line of questioning. Uh, when I read the Bill C-45 and I look at the provisions involved with youth, how I read that legislation is that it, the five grams acts as a benchmark. And I think all honourable members would agree that we want to do everything we, possible to keep our youth out of the criminal justice system. This is not in any way uh, accepting the fact that they can have marijuana. It's just so that it's a ticketable offence so they're not struck with the rest of their lives with a criminal record. Uh, so I'd like to hear his comments in response to that. But also, um, you know, I, I respect the Conservatives. They represent a segment of society that has problems with this bill. But I would agree with the Parliamentary Secretary and the Liberals. The status quo is not working. The statistics are there to back it up. A criminal and law and order approach to this problem has not worked. So in that instance, Mr. Speaker, I would like to hear from the Honourable Member, what do the Conservatives propose as an alternative? Thank you. Honourable Member for Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker, I have to point out to the Honourable Member, he says that the Conservatives aren't worried enough about the, the criminalizing the, this activity. We're worrying about children having access to marijuana, having access to any marijuana. We're very concerned about that. The health uh, studies, as I pointed out in, in my speech, uh, point out very clearly the harmful effects that smoking marijuana can have on brain development. And one of the things we have pointed out to them as well is that there is no safe, there's no safe level on this. And so uh, I've indicated, as we have over time, that we have to, uh, we can't do what this Liberal government is doing, is dumping it all in the province. Every time there's, a, there's a, any question about how this is going to be implemented, I know what happened to them. It's just like they're, uh, they're 
their promise on electoral form. They didn't think it out. They probably thought the NDP was going to uh, win the election, so they could promise anything. Here's a yeah, you know, we'll have you know new electoral reform. We'll have we're going to legalize marijuana. These are all wonder wonderful things. Well, it turns out then they ended up in government. Well, now you uh, you can see, and the honourable member, I bet, will agree with it. They haven't thought this thing out, out at all. And so uh, to say that, well, yeah, we're, we're going to get it all, push it all through, then the province can all figure that out or something. Well, I think that's completely unacceptable. And yes, we are, uh, we are very, very concerned about that, and we're proud of the position that we've been taking. Right. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Thank, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to acknowledge I don't believe there's anyone in this House that doesn't care about the safety and the health of our kids yep. and about their outcomes. I believe that's something that we all can, can agree on. I think we can also, also agree that the current system is failing our kids. The overwhelming evidence, it's a fact, that our kids are using cannabis at a higher rate than any other country in the world. And the cannabis that they're using, they're getting from organized crime. They're getting from criminals. And so I don't think it's appropriate, and I don't believe any member of this House believes it's appropriate, that we should leave the health and the safety of our children up to criminals. And I think a government has a responsibility to take action. I would, I would and, and I'm, all, I'm, I'm certain as a former Minister of Justice, a member from Niagara is well aware, that right in every province and territory across this country, we deal with the, the, the issues of the possession of alcohol, its purchase and its consumption, most appropriately under provincial governance and provincial regulation. Every province in this country and territory has a Liquor Licence Act that makes it a provincial offence to possess, purchase and consume alcohol. And that enables law enforcement to enforce an absolute prohibition for young people under the age of adulthood, however it's defined in a province, to, to pro for the total absolute prohibition of alcohol. Similar measures for cannabis would enable law enforcement to enforce a prohibition in all amounts of cannabis for young people without subjecting them to a criminal record. And I'm sure that the member opposite would agree that we want to protect the health of our kids, but as I've talked to parents across the country, I can tell you, parents are concerned about their health, they're concerned about their outcome for their kids, and they're concerned that they're going to get a criminal record. And we have a responsibility to address those legitimate concerns that all parents have, and that's what this legislation is about. Paul, member for Niagara Falls. Uh, I mean, on one part, I'm, I'm not going to challenge the honourable member. Said that if the government legalizes, that the quality of uh, marijuana uh, uh, that our children will be smoking will be increased. I mean, I, again, uh, I, I'm not happy with any uh, marijuana that's being smoked uh, by children. But I, I have, I have to go back to the one section of this that, and I, I put this to the honourable member, okay, we, we're very concerned about the protection and, uh, you know, of our children having access. Again, I, I asked the Minister of Justice, and I, I'd love to hear from the Parliamentary Secretary, is there any easier way to get marijuana if your parents and everybody have got plants in the kitchen? You know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine. And it's not enough just to say, oh, well, you know, um, prescription drugs are up in the, uh, the medicine cabinet here. The children could have access to them. You can protect uh, children against the, 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 the medical uh, prescriptions here by making sure that they are, yeah, my colleagues are t pointing out to the why, ways we can do that. Of course we can, but by definition, you've got to have plants out there, I guess, in the kitchen, by the window. I got lots of sun here, lots of exposure uh, to the kids. And so I can't understand how the Liberals can be making this point that somehow, yes, we're, better, we're protecting our children here. And guess what? You're only going to get four plants here. You can't have 40 plants, just four plants, because we're so worried about the health of our children. I say, skip it. You know, if the honourable members, and I say to the members of the Liberal Party, why not bring a sub-amendment, get rid of that whole thing? about the, f the four plants. Get the plants out of people's houses here. Right. Nobody wants that. Nobody right. wants that, Mr. Speaker. We have time for only a very short question. The Honourable Member for Kitchener-Conestoga. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague for his great speech, pointing out many of the dangers that all of us are aware of in this House. Certainly the safety and welfare of our kids is paramount, but also the safety of those who operate heavy equipment, who are driving on our roads. Uh, these are all concerns that we have. But, Mr. Speaker, my, my colleague pointed out clearly the evidence by the Canadian Medical Association that calls for a minimum age of 21. They're, they would like 25, but in light of the desire to move ahead, they said 21. Now, yet, just yesterday, Mr. Speaker, in the Canadian Medical Association, an editorial by Dr. Diane Kelsall got some great points, but the very last sentence, Mr. Speaker, I know you don't have much time. 
If Parliament truly cares about the public safety, public health and safety of Canadians, especially our youth, this bill will not pass. I wonder what my colleague would say to that, Mr. Speaker. For Niagara Falls. Well, I, first of all, I want to say I want to thank the member for Kitchener Conestega for his support of the amendments here that we have brought forward here today, and thank him for his support uh, throughout this issue on behalf of our party here. He's absolutely correct, and I'd say to the Liberals here, raise the age to 21. If you're so concerned about children, go ahead. Just don't take my word for it. Check out all the medical reports. Check out all the organizations. It's not the Conservatives who are saying that you, you can't smoke you shouldn't be smoking marijuana uh, under the age of 21 or 25. No, 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 no. Check with all the medical people and then make an amendment, bring it up to 21, start with that, get rid of the four plants in the, in the kitchen here, and that will better protect children in this country, I promise you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debates, the Honourable Member for Cowichan, Malahat Langford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure to be rising to speak to Bill C-45. Uh, I think this is a first important step to realize the failed approach that we've had in this country for far too long. The war on drugs has plagued Canada for far too long. Uh, we have had marijuana criminalized in this country since 1923, and I believe, based on the statistics, it's, about, it's time for a change. It's time for a new approach, and this is an important first step. Now, this bill was, in, was announced. Uh, the plans for this legalization were announced in the Liberals' plans. Um, it's been in government now for almost 20 months, and of course we have probably until July of next year until we finally see it implemented. So it's going to be a long time for Canadians to finally see some action on this file. Now the NDP will support the government's plans on this in principle, but we want to ensure that it is done effectively that uh, marijuana has the safeguards in place for our children, mm -hmm. and that we have a reliable long-term revenue stream that is specifically earmarked for public health initiatives, prevention, and all important research, because those areas are very much lacking in our country today. Now, we do have some key differences with the government, as we do believe that the Liberals should put action in their concern. Like, it's about the unjust laws. The, the, the crime that still exists in this country for simple possession is profoundly unjust for a substance that the government is going to legalize. That has always been our strong position, and we will continue to hound this government on that point whenever we get a chance. Our justice system is clogged up. We have serious criminal charges that are either being stayed or withdrawn. This is all in light of the Jordan decision, yet this government refuses to act on an initiative which would free up so many police resources, so many justice resources that are so sadly needed in our country right now. Now, as we debate this legislation and, uh, you know, the government is giving itself a pat on the back for meeting one of its promises, uh, this is all being done in the light of the fact that many Canadians are still getting criminal records for possession, and it very much disproportionately affects our youth and racialized Canadians. Mm -hmm. We are going to continue to push this government whenever possible on those points. Um, we will be preparing constructive pr proposals for this government, especially in light of bringing pardons. Uh, we feel that those who have received previous convictions for marijuana possession should have some form of amnesty offered. Now, I have heard some encouraging words from the Public Safety Department lately, but uh, the government should be following through on that, and we would certainly like to see a firm commitment spoken by a minister in this House at some point in the future. The government must also be clear and upfront regarding provincial responsibilities. Uh, we certainly want to see how this uh, structure is going to be shared, and indeed uh, the, the provinces are going to have a lot of responsibilities, so it's up to the federal government to clearly lay those out. Now, there are a lot of items in this bill. It's about 131 pages. It's, it's a lot to read through. This is, this is quite a revolutionary step for Canada after so much prohibition. But to briefly go over some of the main points, Mr. Speaker, it will allow an adult who is over 18 to possess up to 30 grams of marijuana or equivalent in a public place. Um, it does not preclude a province from harmonizing the age according to their liquor laws if, if they so wish. I know that the Canadian Medical Association, as uh, has been spoken by my Conservative colleagues, have expressed concern with the age limit. And I think we do need to take those concerns into question. But the thing to remember 
is that age 18 is an age when we trust Canadians to vote. Age 18 is an age when we trust they have the ability to freely join our armed forces and fight abroad for us. So it is a bit of a struggle finding that right age. I know that we need to, to invest those dollars in research uh, and prevention campaigns so that our youth understand the risks that come with heavy and sustained use of cannabis. Um, so the other, the other point I know which is causing a lot of consternation is, is the possession of up to four cannabis plants per household. Um, this is probably something that will have to be looked at. I don't think there's anything in this legislation that precludes a municipality or a strata corporation from setting its own rules. So this is simply about removing prohibition and punishment for those four plants. But again, I think this is something that uh, Canadian society, I think, has already expressed a little bit of discomfort with. It's something that we certainly do want to be looking at. Now, with respect um, to the punishments, it, it does allow for a punishment of up to 14 years for anyone over the age of 18 who sells marijuana to a young person. Uh, this is a fairly harsh punishment. It's actually in line with uh, the production of child pornography and attempting to leave Canada to commit terrorism. And I know it gives judicial discretion, but it is a pretty um, harsh punishment for this, and I, I think we need to look as to whether this complies with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Um, and with respect to young people, it will allow young people between the ages of 12 and 18 to possess up to five grams. And again, I, I mentioned this in questions and comments earlier, Mr. Speaker. This is about trying to save our youth. It's not about promoting the use of the drug. It's about trying to save our youth from going through the criminal justice system. And if they go over that, they will be subject to the Youth Criminal Justice Act. But I think that's uh, an important distinction to make. And, and nothing precludes the ability of provinces to institute civil offences, ticketable offences for this. That's an important point to, to bring in. Um, so uh, with respect, uh, there, there will be minor ticketing um, options available in this legislation, so it will give police officers some leeway. Uh, so if someone is over the 30 grams and under 50 grams in possession, uh, they could be subject to a $200 fine. If, if you went over four plants, you had five or six, it allows a ticketable scheme. Again, this is about saving our overburdened criminal justice system, uh, which is currently feeling the strain of the Jordan decision, and allowing those civil offenses so that we can have our criminal justice system look at the serious charges that are currently being withdrawn and stayed in our courts today. Now, uh, there's also going to be restrictions uh, on the type of packaging and the promotions. Um, there will be a lot of um, freedom given to the Minister of Health in, de in developing regulations that, uh, that deal with these particular laws. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that there's no false, misleading or deceptive promotion of the products, uh, nothing that appeals to young people. Um, we certainly want to see some clarity on, on child-resistant packaging. Uh, the labeling of THC amounts, the, the active ingredient in marijuana, and indeed, of course, the health warning. So I think something similar to what we already see on tobacco uh, packaging. Um, there will also be a cannabis tracking system that sets up a national seed-to-sale tracking system uh, in order that all the, the licensed producers, we can track the marijuana that's been produced from basically the farm uh, to a person's household at, at the point of sale. Now, some of the outstanding issues, Mr. Speaker, um, we, we think that, uh, as I identified in my introduction, there are a lot of key issues that are left up to the provinces. And, and, and I know some provincial governments have expressed some consternation uh, about that, but uh, you know, I think the government has rightly pointed out this is a shared jurisdiction. The federal government has clear jurisdiction in the federal criminal law power, but when it comes to sales, and distribution that is very clearly a provincial power under our constitution. But again, it, it will require some harmonization between this government and, and our various provincial governments. Um, we also certainly, as I mentioned in my introduction, we would like to see more information from the Minister of Finance, from this government, on what the tax and revenue structure will be. We don't want this simply to be a cash cow for the government. We want to make sure that the funds are being uh, generated for, for a reliable stream of revenue for research and prevention. Um, I, I was sad to see that on the day this legislation was rolled out, 
the Minister of National Revenue was present with the Minister of Justice and the Minister of Public Safety, but she had nothing to say about her portfolio, mm -hmm. which is the Canada Revenue Agency. So uh, that was an opportunity missed, in my opinion. So when it comes to uh, that, that, that uh, long-term revenue stream, um, we will, we're certainly looking for some more details. The other thing that's been brought up, um, certainly that I've heard from my caucus colleagues, and I know the, the member for Windsor West, is the issues that uh, we have to deal with at the border with our American cousins. Because we know that the Trump government is, is taking a decidedly uh, wrong turn on this approach, but you know, they are our neighbor and we have to deal with the laws that they put in place. And, and a lot of our trade, a lot of Canadians are reliant on crossing the border with the United States freely and, and without hindrance. And, and uh, you know, my friend from Windsor West, the, he, he sees um, so much trade go across from Windsor to Detroit every single day. And, and he's already expressed concern about, you know, whether truck drivers are going to see increased delays. So, uh, again, I think this is an area where the, the government still has a lot of homework to do. Uh, the public safety minister has been asked this question repeatedly. I think his answers have been lacking so far. I think he owes it to this House, to all members in this House, to clearly explain how the negotiations are going with our American counterparts and exactly uh, what, what progress is being made in that particular um, area. Um, you know, and, and, and it's not just trade, it's when, when ordinary Canadians are going down for a visit. You know, if, if, if we have legal uh, cannabis in Canada and they're asked by a border guard if you've ever ingested or smoked marijuana, you know, the, the answer can have serious consequences for a person. So um, while we support the overall goal of this legislation, we still have to confront the reality that exists with our, our closest neighbour and ally. And of course, the, the Trump administration uh, is, is anything but consistent these days. We seem to have to follow the president's policy directions by reading his tweets. So it's uh, something that we will have to, to stay on top of. Um, the other item, Mr. Speaker, concerns the international treaties uh, that Canada is party to. You know, 1961, 1971, and 1988. Uh, I've asked the government uh, this question a few times. We, they still have not given us an answer of what their plans are for Canada's obligations under these treaties. And it's not a trick question. I would simply like to know what the government's plans are. Are they going to make an announcement that we're withdrawing? I mean, the, the, the deadline is July the 1st, and, and I would hope that in the next 30 or so days they come up with a plan that we can have confidence in. Um, now, the, the, uh, and I think those international treaties sort of represent a 20th century way of thinking on the drug policy problem, and I think uh, Canada has an opportunity to assume some international leadership in this regard, if, especially if we become the first G20 nation to legalize it. Uh, we could probably you know, stand firm in the world and, and promote an alternative way of dealing with drug issues rather than the old failed law and order approach. Now, the, uh, the, the, I have referenced the, the crisis that exists in our justice system, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, and, and particularly the fact that we, we have seen some serious criminal charges um, like murder, um, like assault, that have been stayed or withdrawn. And, you know, we have repeatedly brought up with this government that one of the interim things that they could have done is to institute decriminalization, to, to make sure that our police our prosecutors, crown prosecutors, are not having to deal with minor marijuana possession charges. Because as the law is currently written under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, these are still crimes. Uh, we don't have enough crown prosecutors, we don't have enough courtrooms, we don't have enough administrative staff to run an effective justice system today. And the minister has repeatedly identified these problems um, and, and has acknowledged the continual wrongdoing of the criminal approach to this and yet they refuse to do anything as an interim measure, and, and, and they fall back on the same tired arguments, which I don't think Canadians uh, are very convinced of. And perhaps the Liberals are, but uh, I think Canadians, when they hear those arguments, do not buy into the Liberal argument. Um, so uh, other than appointing the proper amount of judges and resourcing the system, again, th this decriminalization measure could be something that is very effective. Okay. Now, Mr. Speaker, if we go to the Liberal platform of 2015, they, they, and I'm going to paraphrase them here, the Liberals acknowledged in 2015 that arresting and prosecuting cannabis offences is expensive for our criminal justice system, 
and it traps too many Canadians in the criminal justice system for minor, non-violent offences. They will find no disagreement from the NDP on that claim. Now, for decriminalization, historically, opposition to decriminalization uh, usually came from those who favoured continued prohibition. Uh, there have been fears expressed that decriminalization would send counterproductive messages that would increase the use of cannabis and relate problems um, and, and related problems and that would sustain and possibly strengthen criminally controlled contraband trade in cannabis. Now, despite these largely unsubstantiated fears, many nations and subnational states have opted for the decriminalization model. Mm -hmm. Researchers have found that under prohibition, cannabis users, for the most part, even in times of e easy access, moderate their cannabis use such that it does not interfere with their lives or lead to adverse health consequences.